Hello, and thank you for joining Virtual Grads. My name is Rami Abu Sleiman, and I'll be presenting today on a portion of my, master, uh, my PhD thesis. This talk is titled, Expanding Understanding of the Vuzwar Beam Analog in Flat Roof Excavations Using the Discrete Element Method. So why am I doing this research? First off, current design of these flat roof excavations relies heavily on simplifying assumptions, such as continuous, homogeneous, isotropic, and linearly elastic material properties. Uh, we know this to not be the case, in, in particularly in these discontinuous sedimentary environments where flat roof excavations are uh, typically advanced. Uh, furthermore, self-supporting capacity of these materials is not considered, and the ground control, so the bolts, the steel sets, the wire mesh, the shotcrete, uh, the amount of, of those that are installed is largely based on empirical case studies of what has worked and what has not worked in the past. And regardless of the conservatism used when implementing these methods, uh, roof falls continue to injure and kill those working in the underground, particularly in bituminous, underground bituminous coal in the US and uh, worldwide. And from a slightly more academic point of view, the mechanics of the system is, is poorly understood. How roof self-supporting capacity influences pillar loading and how that influences local entry stability and global mine stability. Here are two uh, examples of flat roof excavations. On the left, we have one in an underground stone mine, and on the right, we have a more civil application of an underground data center. And two things typically dictate the use of a flat roof excavation, that is geology, first and foremost, and then the use, right? Particularly in mining, if you're over excavating greater than what you're or, or seam of interest is, then you you have to slough out and take out all this extra material that means nothing to you. So these flat roofs have been studied by using the Boosbar beam analog um, since 1941 when it was first theorized by Evans. And here to the right, we can see a, a traditional Boosbar beam geometry featuring a mid-span joint and an abutment joint. And based on the material properties of this beam, this, the Young's modulus, as well as its uh, geometry, there are analytical solutions that exist which can predict the maximum displacement as well as the maximum horizontal compressive stress that the beam will incur. For those of you who remember from mechanics and materials, those simply supported and fixed end and indeterminate beams, very similar to that. And you can see this horizontal compression arch forming um, and this is what inspired the, the name Vuzwar beam after these Vuzwar arches from Roman construction. And the Vuzwar beam can fail in four main modes. We're gonna look at the snap through failure, which occurs in slender beams where uh, the, the deflection of the beam overcomes this uh, moment, this horizontal compression and the beam fails at the center or when the beam is sufficiently thick, you don't have enough horizontal compression generated to support, to, to self-stabilize the beam and it, and it fails through abutment slip failure. These inelastic failure modes uh, won't be discussed in this topic, in this talk. So the objectives of this research are to use the discrete element method found in UDEX Itasca software to capture Vuzwar mechanics and to see how model inputs geometric inputs influence the baseline behavior. Um, you can see to the right here, a little cartoon depicting how the D, how DEM uh, represents a given rock mass by separating intact material to blocks and the uh, joints and faults between them into contacts and discontinuities. And these blocks can fully separate. Once we've established the baseline behavior, we're gonna capture more complex behavior by changing those boundary conditions that I showed you in the last slide adding horizontal stresses, in situ loading, and to test the effect of roof support in the form of bolting. So these are the results of our preliminary uh, Vuzwar beam models. We can see uh, mid-span deflection here on the, on the top and maximum horizontal stress here on the bottom. Two important things to note were that our models match previous models, which is great. Our models are shown in red and the previous models are shown in black from Dietrichs and Kaiser, 1999. Um, as well as the analytical solution shown by the uh, black lines. And initially they did not match, which led us to 
conduct a sensitivity analysis and find that uh, the interaction between the block rounding as well as the the size of the finite difference zones that make up each block significantly impacted the analytical solutions uh, error or the model error rather to the analytical solution. Once that baseline behavior was established, we started playing around with the boundary conditions in a methodical way. So we removed these zero velocity boundary conditions and added a horizontal stress. And the results were pretty interesting. We found that displacement approach to limiting value, but that it was hard to capture that value when we had attempted to adjust the analytical solution to account for it. Um, the opposite was true with horizontal confinement, uh, with horizontal stress rather, with at, at a certain point when this abutment joint closes, the increase in applied horizontal stress uh, is linear, has a linear relationship with the increase in measured mid-span stress, indicating that there was a simple adjustment to be made to the analytical solution to account for that by just adding the level of applied stress. Determining how this deflection behaves is a little tricky because it's a combination of the elastic behavior of this portion as well as the movement of this ridge, formerly rigid abutment is now being pushed out due to an imbalance of force. When this is low enough, the force generated by this deflection is overcoming this and allowing for excess deflection to occur. So then we threw those Vuzwar geometries into in situ loading conditions and we tested two different depths at 30 meters and 100 meters. We tested different heights of Vuzwar, so to test the surcharge loading that's occurring behind the immediate roof. And we tested multiple in situ horizontal stresses. Um, and the interesting results from this are that the state of vertical stress as indicated by the cluster of 30 meter models and the cluster of 100 meter models are generally uh, important, right? So the, both the surcharge loading and the state of in situ vertical stress are important in determining the degree of deflection that is going to occur, but they all approach a limiting value as stresses increase more so with shallower models. And interestingly, in the shallowest models with the highest surcharge loads, we had abutment slip occurring due to horizontal confinement not being generated and the beam not being able to support the weight of the load behind it. And Unfortunately, we weren't able to capture any of this behavior by adjusting the analytical solutions as far as displacement goes. But when we looked at mid -span, maximum mid-span stresses, not only did we find less of the variation, we found that our previous simple horizontal stress model matched our in-situ stress models very well. And the analytical solution, the simple adjustment by adding the, uh, simply adding the state of horizontal stress at the entry height, uh, matched it fairly well. And you'll, you'll notice that this is from the mid-span, which is typically underpredicted, whereas the abutment would plot somewhere up here and it is typically overpredicted. Furthermore, the difference between our unsupported and supported models shows a 50% decrease in horizontal stress at the mid-span, but that stress concentrations at the abutment remain elevated even when the roof is supported. So in conclusion, we confirmed that UDEC was able to capture Vuzwar beam behavior, but that it was heavily dependent on the interaction between block rounding and zone size. We've established a foundation for analyzing more realistic roof conditions through uh, increased complexity of Vuzwar boundary conditions. And we've also shown that we can capture the roof self-supporting capacity by using the Vuzwar beam analog and analyzing that through the lens of the Vuzwar beam analog. And finally, as a bonus, analysis of a Vuzwar DFN fracture network in the roof provided us with a repeatable discontinuous medium that we could use for more complicated numerical models, where the geometry of those joints, those place, the placings in relation to other joints and to other elements in the models would not be affected by the geometry explicitly. The applications of this research include the development of a unifying roof stability Vuzwar beam analog, uh, roof support design optimization. So if we had angled those bolts in the corners, would we have successfully reduced those stresses? And also predicting changes in roof factor of safety with changing ground conditions, say by using LIDAR or extensometer data. I'd like to acknowledge the Alpha Foundation for Mine Safety, as well as NIOSH for their funding. And thank you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on YouTube or shoot me an email.